Hello everybody. I want to show off a little application I've been working on. Now I showed a preview of it a few months back, but I think I'm actually ready to release the source code. It's probably still a little buggy, and if you find any uh, major bugs or security vulnerabilities in it, please let me know. Essentially what this little script does is it goes out and it checks your recent log files and grips them for information like the top 404 errors, the top 500 series errors, remote file includes, stuff like that. First thing I do is I log in. Now I have this thing set to be IP restricted and password restricted. The password currently in the uh, demo code is change this password. Obviously change this password. Now I've already logged in here recently. This information is actually cached in cookies to speed things up. But you'll see it gives you the top 4 free errors, the top 4 4 errors, and the top 500 series errors. The reason I do this is a lot of times web scanners will either cause a lot of errors in your application as they throw things that your application can't handle, or if they're looking for certain directories, they may try to access directories they don't have access to or don't exist. So you'll get a lot of 404s and 403s. So let's actually look deeper at some of this information. As you can see, we have these pop up bubbles. If we mouse over some details that are already there, you see it gives you a simple who is for whoever it is that's hitting your site. Now, right now, this is not recursive. However, if you want more information on them, you can always click Info, and that should take you off to Rob Text so you can find out more information about that particular person. Now, they may or may not be an attacker. To find out more information, you may want to put your mouse over where it says Banned or Shit Can. Some people say Shun, I say Shit Can. And if you can get your mouse over to that point correctly, sometimes you have to rearrange. Well, that one's a little bit being a little difficult. Let me use this one instead. You'll see a bunch of remote file include, possibly. Now, in this case, we have a lot of find data, and I think a few where they tried to do stuff like get the password. We'll go into more details on that in a bit. But essentially, you can, uh, uh, this looks like it's coming from Google, so this, yeah, I need to do some more checking up on this one. This one's probably okay, and someone's probably just linked to me uh, in ways that they shouldn't have. But anyway, let's continue on. I can mouse over something else and you'll see it gives me a list of what the people have tried to do. In this case you'll see someone tried to access the directory administrator and index.php which isn't there so it gives a bunch of 404 files, 404 errors. Similar things go on with this. You see people trying to post stuff that causes errors in my application and as I said before network scanners, oh sorry, web scanners, ones looking for vulnerabilities will a lot of times cause a lot of 500 and 400 series errors. But let's actually look at some more information. If we click on a particular IP address, we can find more details about exactly what they were doing. Now I see a lot of this kind of traffic, people trying to do these sorts of remote file includes, and it's almost always from that particular user agent string. So I'd love to know more about that. Uh, but let's go back to the main page. As you've already guessed probably, I can mouse over something to find out what kind of bad data I'm getting. And that looks like I'm getting a lot of remote file includes. So I can go ahead and hit shit can on that. And what that should do is edit my HT access file and automatically put in a deny in that IP address. As you can see, I've already put in a ton and ton and ton of denies. Now, a few other things you can do besides look at the current data. And just to uh, make sure you understand this, when you mouse over the network information, it shows you the who is. When you mouse over band or shit can, it shows you the recent traffic from that particular IP address. Now, I also have some regexes in there. You can even search for something. Like, let's say I want to see um, people who have accessed my website on Backtrack. I do a search for Backtrack. Or I'm going to do a search for an IP address or various other things. And find out who else has been accessing that particular page. And I should be able to grab on any of these fields. I can also click on certain categories, like this one automatically uses a search for path transversions using regex. In this case, you see someone tried to use environment, and this particular attack, as I understand it, what someone does is they throw into your application some variable that may or may not get shown, but the idea is it's going to get into the environmental variables, and then when they try to include that back in, they can execute code in the context of your web application. This could be something using like system and like it's running off the command line or just something equivalent to uh, 
cross-site uh, attack. If I go underneath password grabs, you'll see some attempts that people have tried to grab the password file off my shared host. And if I show RFIs, there's a lot of stuff in show off RFIs. Now I'm going to scroll down here. Another thing that's useful for show off eyes, if you want to get your own collection of web shells, like you see this one here, this is probably someone trying to grab off this server a web shell and get it to run on my host. Notice on the remote host it's .txt so it doesn't get parsed on the remote host. When it sucks into my site in theory, it should get parsed except for, well that remote file include doesn't actually work with the way I have my code implemented. And there's a few others in here. If I scroll down far enough, now a little bit earlier, I went ahead and opened up one that did exist. So let me go over that. And you can see this particular one was something that someone tried to get to run on my site earlier. And I can go ahead and copy it and now I have me a new web shell to analyze or use someplace else. Now not all these may necessarily turn anything. I've noticed a lot of times what will end up happening is people will keep trying to access web shells on hosts that are no longer actually there. For giggles, I'll take this one just to see if it'll come up. It may or may not. Yep, that one does. And it's encoded, but with some work you can decode that. But this is a great way to collect web shells. I can also show all the 500s, all the 403s, and various other bits of information show the error log in total. This is sometimes useful information. And, of course, I can also log back out. Now, to give you an idea how simple the source code for this is, essentially the only settings you have to make is point to wherever your logs are, error and access, point to where your HT access file is that you want to be able to edit, and you got to give it a list of IP addresses that are allowed in. Now, in this case, I put in non-routable IP addresses or loopback addresses just as demos. But you can use public IP addresses, which is what you want to do. But you can see you can just put the first few octets in, all of it, or just one octet, and it will restrict it down to those particular networks. Also, you can set a password, which I highly recommend you change. The code is relatively simple. If you keep scrolling down, you should be able to find the regexes I use to find these different types of information. Like this is the one I would look for 500 series errors with. But the code is fairly simple. In theory you should do it is take it to your website, unzip it someplace. There will be a couple directories there. And um, just unzip everything I provide in the zip file into the same folder. And it should work as long as you set these paths correctly. But uh, hope you find it useful. Let me know if you have any other ideas. Thank you.